Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Howard. How are you? I'm doing fine. Great, great. Let me do the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very excited and honored to welcome our featured guest for this evening. He is a director, a producer, a writer, and somebody who smashed down a lot of walls. We're so excited to talk to Mr. Howard Zeem. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate the opportunity. It's quite nice of you. Considering the film, I came out with those films 50 years ago. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I want you to know, Howard, you're listening, or talking to, rather, two generations of fans. Tiffany's my daughter, and I'm the father, and I saw Flesh Gordon at the drive-in when it first came out, and it changed my life. I loved it. It's my my favorite sci-fi sex parody film. Oh, thank you very much. That's quite nice to hear. (laughs) And you never hear enough of that. Right. So let's let's start out by kind of talking about your uh, your path to how you got into the business and everything. Because from what I understand, you came from a fairly conservative upbringing, right? Uh, yes, I did. Um, in fact, I didn't get laid until I was twenty-one. <laughs> um, so that, uh, but. Uh, uh, yeah, my father was uh, was a, a Lutheran fundamentalist, and uh, when he heard that, I, I had a, a high school date with a Catholic girl. He almost disowned me. He said, "Well, you, uh, if Catholics don't allow the children to be brought up out of the Catholic Church, so mm-hmm. uh, you know." Anyway, that was um, the way things started out, but. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, I did. I I was talking to some fellows today, today, and explaining. Well, when I, you know, when I got into the business, um, w- women and men weren't allowed. You know, just in the, a few years prior, weren't allowed to sit on a bed together. Right. And uh, and so when I started shooting, um, I hooked up with a fellow Bill Osco and we started making uh, porno movies which were illegal at the time and so so what I did was in order to but I, you know to, to show a blow job I, I shot the girl's head from the back mm-hmm. and put whipped cream, whipped cream on the end of the guy's dick <laughs> <laughs> Now, so, uh, tell me. So yeah, so when she turned around and the whipped cream was uh, uh, missing, uh, everybody could make their own guess right. what, oh my, what happened to it. I'm having flashbacks because I never did anything on the level you did, but we tried our forte at, at uh, directing a few nudie cu- uh, cuties that we made for this company, and we had this crazy scene. We had a, a dildo with, with a suction cup on the end that we suctioned onto a TV screen with static, you know, like you get when there's like no station, and, and she's giving a thing a blowjob, and it had a bulb on it with a hose that squirted yogurt in her face. <laughs> so it, oh, okay. it, it totally <laughs> reminded me, I didn't realize I was using your method at the time. That's incredible. <laughs> well, that kind of leads into, uh, uh, you know, you know, today uh, porn, uh, porn is quite the... Uh, had and uh, you, you know I I don't know if you're familiar with uh, German goo girls, but um, uh, they uh, girl they're beautiful girls and they you know they, they I listened to an interview by Victoria Goo who's sort of the main uh, the feature actress mm-hmm. and she said the first thing she likes to do is uh, suck suck dick, second is swallow cum, third is drink piss. The fourth is fucking, and the last thing she likes is anal sex, <laughs> which which brings me into the topic. Uh, you, you know, men have a have a problem liking women, and they they want to see women in pain. And mm-hmm. I, I found in my experience, very very few women enjoyed anal sex, even though my wife actually made a movie. A, with a co- company called Older and Anal, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but I didn't even know she liked anal sex, and I don't think she did. I think she just did it for the money. Right. But anyway. 
Well, women, you know, they, they're like, well, that's a pain in the ass, but sometimes so are they. So, <laughs> it, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I was saying I'm working on a book um, called uh, Our Father Who Art in Heaven, Why Do You Hate Women So Much? <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and I pointed out in the book that uh, there were 26, uh, at last count, there were 26 sites, sites on the Internet that catered to anal sex only. Wow. And, uh, yeah, older and, well, uh, yeah, that's, is, isn't that strange? Right. And, you know, and, and, you know, and the, and the basically the description of the, uh, of the site, so said, oh, watch her get her ass torn apart or, uh, you know, it was all violent uh, language. Yeah. And, um, so it was kind of, Strange listening to this Victoria Goo say that you know the you know the only thing she didn't enjoy was anal sex, even though she did it on the uh, German Goo Goo site. Wow, for sure. You know, we were talking about the old days, and and people really didn't understand that porn was illegal, especially in Los Angeles. Now, what was it like shooting those loofs with Bill Osco? I know you guys probably have had some close calls with the law. I know you had a problem with Flesh Garden. We'll talk about that a little bit where your, your footage got confiscated. But what about when you made the loofs? I mean, how was the process? I mean, did you have to run and hide? Like, we've seen porn shoots where they were hiding and running in and out of a motel room because they had to be careful. What was it like with you? Did you have close calls? Were you arrested? Well, uh, yeah, I, I always... Um when I, you know, when I realized I was going to have problems with the police, I started uh, saying all my films were directed by Harry Hopper, uh -huh. who was a, a pseudonym I used. So if the police found my, one of my films, uh, they said, "Oh, uh, connect me with it." Uh -huh. uh, but right. but um, yeah, it was it was crazy times, and uh, you you know the the the, the, uh, poli the police just twisted things around and when I did get busted um, uh, you know they in a shoot I was doing up in uh, Big Bear and the uh, one of the girls dropped out and the agent uh, had to send up another girl and he was supposed to check out their IDs etc etc and he failed to do so and so when she came up it turned out she was under age, which oh. I didn't know, I didn't know at the time, but but I didn't also know that the other person that was on the shoot had been arrested for for some for breaking and entering some kind of crime that he was had you know had the police after him for, mm -hmm. right. and he he told them that he said, well, yeah, I told Howard that uh, she was under age, and he said, oh, oh, it's no big deal, uh, you know, go right ahead, so. So anyway, I, I I got busted, and the, the one of the, uh, the three charges were you know oral oral copulation, and but the the third charge was uh, 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 was uh, what, what the, it it was anyway it was uh, sex with a with a minor, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, and and the judge had her had her up on the on the stage uh, up on the seat, uh, you know, and. The DA was uh, showing the, you know, the film that she was in, and and, he, and her name was Patty. And he said, "Now, tell me, uh, what's going on here?" And she said, "Well, I'm performing oral copulation." And the judge says, "Well, young lady, do you know what oral copulation means?" And she says, "Yes. That's when the girl sucks a man's dick." <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be any more clearer than that. I'm definitely. Yeah. So w when you did these, now you had said that you were you were charged with something that was related to oral copulation. Were you in the shorts yourself, or were you just directing? Well, what I did, what I did is uh, a lot of the the guys, you know, couldn't get a hard on. Yeah. And so whenever they did, I did what was called a, you know, a substitution shot. <laughs> there you I, go. Yeah. And I, I would just uh, stick stick my dick in for a few, you know, for a, whatever it took a minute or so, yeah. and and I would have my assistant uh, uh, shoot it. And as soon as I I came, I would pull it out, and so you would see the 
orgasm and it, it, so that was sort of um how we got around that so anyway yeah that that's what this so this girl patty that I had, when I found out she was, I, I didn't find out she was underage until afterwards, but uh, I had done a substitution scene with her, and, uh, so, you know, so that that's how that led, you know, uh, I got caught up in that. Yeah, you know, it was really incredible, like I said, we, we did some nudie cutie stuff, and it wasn't real hardcore, but we were the guest of a few hardcore sets before that and it was shocking and amazing to me that the guys couldn't get it up yeah it happens very 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 often <laughs> and everybody had to take the shot you know we had to get the needle in the dick and, and that's that's not fun but but yeah well the guys all think they're gonna you know you, you, they're gonna fuck their brains out <laughs> but, they, uh, but then when they get up you know when it comes face to face you know they, they're, they're you know the situation. They finally get intimidated, and uh, you know so that's how that came, that came about. But um, yeah, it um, yeah it's not uncommon. And, and like I say, you know every all all guys have you know have a, have anxiety about right. getting laid, whether they admit it or not. Uh, and, uh, you know, but then of course Viagra came along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, and, and you know, it, go ahead. No, go on. Well, I was just going to say the other thing, too, that, that surprised me, and I don't know, maybe you can talk about uh, actresses that caused you problems, because a lot of those women on those sets are bitches. Like, I had some real serious problems with actresses that didn't want to do her scene and, and you know, wanted to sleep, and she was all bitchy and cranky. And even on the sets that I visited as a guest, as soon as that camera goes off, they treat their fellow actors or male actors as shit, like shit. You know. Well, yeah, there's not a great love between. <laughs> well, part part of that is is men. Men men have you know, like I said, there's 26 anal uh, anal sex sites uh, sites on the on the internet, and you know, and women don't enjoy, don't enjoy doing anal sex. Yeah. So. But but men but men enjoy seeing them you know squirm getting anal and you know and the girls are used to smiling and looking like they love it, <laughs> but in, in reality they're not enjoying it at all. I mean like that Victoria Goo from German Goo, uh, Goo Girl said uh, that was her least uh, you know uh, least enjoyable thing to do. Yeah. Right. So how did you uh, first meet Bill Osco? Well. Uh, yeah, I, I had hooked up with a guy named uh, Callum Anderson, uh, Callum Gallagher, and we were we had put together a, a little band, and we were trying to get you know work, and the band was called uh, Father Flotsky and the Umbilical Cord. Love it. And uh, uh, Bill came into our our room, and, and you know he said, "Well, what you guys need is a manager," and you know so that sounded cool and. So you know we agreed. So Bill became the manager, and uh, but the you know the band didn't go anywhere. Uh -huh. uh, but, but then you know when I got into making, you know like well like I say at first it was softcore films and we didn't you know we didn't show any hardcore, but uh, but when when a, a theater on Mel Melrose Avenue started sneaking in a hardcore movie from San Francisco that they had gotten uh, you know of course all the customers flocked to that uh, theater yeah. and, uh, and so then we you know we did the same we had a and you know my films became very popular uh, and we you know we were supplying films in, in Texas and Bill and I had put together a couple of theaters around the country in Arizona and Boise, Idaho and what have you and uh, and then one night my wife came home from she she was working as, as a stripper uh, well at that time we were in the middle of making Flesh Gordon and you know and the money was running very thin and uh, I, I was paying all the animators and people uh, you know with I had a little piece of paper I kept how much I owed uh, them and, and but then Bill would pull up to the studio out in Eagle Rock in his Rolls Royce 
because Bill always had to have a Rolls Royce. Yeah. So everybody looked at me and said, you know, well, why are we being, you know, why can't we get our money? Mm-hmm. And um, so, it, but it, but anyway, that 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 led to us when I found when my wife came home from working at the ball, she said, yeah, I, I a fellow who who had seen Deep Throat up in Idaho, uh, uh, you know. You know, said he saw. It. I, I said, "Well, he must have seen it in Boise, because the only theater we own in Idaho is the Top Theater in a little town called Caldwell." Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, so she saw him the next night, and she said, uh, "Yeah, no, he insisted he he saw the uh, film." Yeah, she said he did see the film at Caldwell, and uh, so I the next day I went to the newspaper stand and I l- looked up the uh, you know theater section and there, there you know and got the boys paper and there was you know uh deep throat now playing at in caldwell idaho at the top theater and and deep throat was making tons of money wherever it made wherever it played right and you know so i, I took the paper into the office and slammed it down from on on bill's desk and said what's going on here and he said, well, I was going to tell you, but I didn't want to, you know, upset things or, you know, whatever. He had some bullshit excuse. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And uh, so, anyway, I at that point, I said, well, look, we we, we can't go on like this. Uh, and, and we parted ways, and I, I gave him the uh, the little theaters we had in, in, in uh, you know, I gave him the Idaho Theater and the Arizona Theaters. And I kept the, the Beverly uh, Cinema, uh, which was paying all our bills, and um, and you know, and, but that worked out real well. We, and and I had a friend, uh, Marvin Lawrence, who I I got to to uh, run the theater, and he hired Ed Muckerman, which who used to be uh, Lou Shear's uh, assistant, and they put together a real good campaign and they got the Beverly making lots of money and all of a sudden uh, I'm able to pay the animators back up and you know I, I got a you know a, a, a sort of a uh, well we need our money now or we're going to quit and uh, but anyway I worked it out and it was crazy days. Well, did, that, you, that was did, you, did you struggle at all with trying to get uh, Flesh distributed, Flesh Gordon distributed because I understand that because Bill was the one that produced and shopped around the films even though you both were partners with graffiti a lot of people just assumed he made all of the films yeah. right well yeah well that's kind of what happened what yeah because bill bill made all the sales so they assumed he was the one making the films and uh, which wasn't the case at all and uh, in fact somebody came up once to the office and i walked up the i came up the stairs and the guy looked at me and he looked at Bill and he said, "Well, who's this?" And he said, "Well, he's the one who makes the films." Holy shit! Wow. He, yeah. So, uh, and yeah, and there was a lot of confusion for a lot of years. I mean, you know, I, I still, I still see uh, Bill's name show up on credits here and there. So, so anyway, uh, we went ahead and made Mona, but you know, and when it came out, it. Built, you know. I thought it was. We made it for five thousand bucks, and you know, I thought it was just a little piece of shit, mm-hmm. you know, porno movie, uh, like all the other ones. And uh, but Bill took it over to to show to Lou Shear, and he came home, you know, two hours later, and he said, "Yeah, I just sold it for a hundred grand." Wow. Mm. Now, uh, yeah, a, a lot of people would debate you on the fact, and I wanted to ask too because I like a lot of other people thought the first theatrical film released nationwide in, in theaters everywhere was Deep Throat, but you've been given awards and commendations and accolades for saying that you were the first one with with a professionally, theatrically produced, theatrically released Featuring, porn film, which yeah. was Mona the Teenage Nymph. Now, would you say yours was the very first and not Deep Throat? Yeah, it was the first. Uh, actually, a fellow up in... Uh, San Francisco had made a, a, a couple of films, but nothing of, of notoriety. And w- when I made Mona, I, I didn't even realize 
you know, people said, well, you know, it had a psychological plot. And, and, you know, so much just happened by accident. We had a, a guy who was playing uh, Mona's father on the, uh, in the film, and, and he didn't want his face to be shown, so he insisted ho uh, holding a newspaper in front of it so nobody could see who he was. <laughs> so when Mona crawls over to give him a blowjob, you know, that was sort of the uh, psychological, uh, you know, reason that we that we you know got that that accolade right. for mm -hmm. being a you know a psychological film now what was it like in because because uh, just take us back to the day i mean when you guys were shopping around films like mona the virgin nymph and and things like that were these only and because everybody believes that back in the 70s, that porn films were only in specific theaters. You know, everybody talks about 42nd Street and all that kind of stuff. Were they only in kind of like your smaller yeah, indie Yeah, film? yeah, yeah. Porn, porn was strictly illegal. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's why I used the pseudonym Harry Hopper, and I had a couple other names I used. I forget what they are. But, uh, yeah, I never put after... After the first film, when I realized what the situation was, I stopped using my name um, and just went to went to pseudonyms. Uh, you know, nowadays, like I say, you know, you, you, uh, especially in the age of Viagra, uh, back then, you know, like you were saying to me, you know, like you, you found a comedy that guys couldn't get a hard on. Right. Of course, now they they all get a hard on easily, and they're. You know, you know the porn site. You know, there's hundreds and hundreds of porn sites nowadays, and you know, and and guys are sticking two two dicks at the same time and they get into an asshole and three dicks into the girl's mouth. And I, I mean, it's gotten sort of bizarre. And you know, and the girls, you know, the girls basically don't, you know, will do anything for the money. Uh, and but you know and they are they're always you know uh, you know I I went out uh, a fellow from Austria is doing a documentary on me on my life called uh, Finding Planet Finding Planet Porno and uh, we went out to meet a, another guy from Austria that he said is here in Hollywood making a porn movie his name is Mick Blue and uh, you know when I we went over there. Uh, you know, Mick. You know, Mick, Mick had a, a girl that was. You know, she was sitting on the couch waiting to shoot, uh, and uh, and so the, so she just you know didn't say anything. She just was totally bored by the whole situation until it was her turn to shoot, and you know, and and that's kind of the you know the way it was. No, that, that's the way it is, yeah. period, because yeah. when, when you first go on a porn set, you think it's Party City. It's not. It, it's An hour later, you're like, where's the coffee? Yeah, like, like you're all fast <laughs> yeah. at all. I'm like, I was like, wow, life fucking in person. All of a sudden, I didn't care anymore. I just wanted to have a donut, you know? So, let me... Well, yeah. Well, like, yeah, this girl at Mick Blues, uh, as soon as we... As he turned the camera off, she went back to the cell phone. Right. <laughs> Well, let me let me ask you, Howard. Uh, in, in knowing that you were a pioneer in the '70s with these films, what was the the attitude or the environment that you experienced with the female actresses as at the time? Because, of course, you have your legendary porn actresses who all had different perspectives on it. You have people like Linda Lovelace who basically said they didn't want to do it, did it against their will, and then you had people like Marilyn Chambers who more had the idea that a lot of current porn actresses have, and that is, it's not demeaning. It gives me power. It gives me beauty. That kind of a thing. What kind of experience did you have with some of the actresses? Yeah, especially in the early days, because this was before well, they became well, big stars. Yeah, and and even now, uh, but you know, in in general, you know, girls take an attitude towards porn. That's you know, men think of it. As, you know, I, I'm I'm writing another book called uh, you know Our Father Who Art in Heaven. Why do you hate women so much? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and and you know, and that's the attitude of men. You know, most men in the porn the porn sites. You know, they all these anal site, uh, sites. 
you know they you know they all they're all there to you know put put women in pain and uh and you know and the girls go along with it because that's how they're getting paid but uh you know in general you know in general they don't you know no, nobody enjoys pain and especially these girls but you know they're um well you know i'll give you a story like like this company we started renting our house out to uh foreign companies right and um they had a girl named madison on the bed in the bedroom and she was just giving a a, a blow job to die for and you know and just laughing it up and anyway then when the, the shoot was over we went outside and she had a really cute little butt and she was in these hot pants and i gave her a little pinch on the on the butt and i had a, a line which i i kind of learned from the burlesque theater oh i'm not uh, helping you i'm helping i'm helping myself out or something mm -hmm. i forget what it was but anyway she said, keep your fucking hands off me. Oh, no, <laughs> that, that sounds just about like it was. Yeah, that's what, yeah. I, I, I've been yeah. There. Yeah, so you're right. Yeah. So then a, a little later, my, my a friend came uh, came up to the house, and uh, and the, the two girls, uh, uh, Madison and another girl, I forget what her name was, they were out in the yard, uh, you know, sunning themselves, and they were on their hands and knees, and they had their butts up in the air, you know, so the sun could could tan their, their pussies. Mm -hmm. They were both, you know, one was half shaved and the other was totally shaved. All girls shaved now. Uh, which, by the way, was, was I first introduced, uh, you know, shaved pussies in, in uh, Flush Gordon. I, I don't know if you recall that scene. And, and I thank uh, you for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, I, yeah, I love shaved pussies myself. Yeah. But... Uh, but anyway, they 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 turned to me in these when they saw you know we were just looking and they said yeah we we like it when you look, uh, but you know, and that's a, that's the extent of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you know, and that's what Harvey Weinstein didn't understand. Or <laughs> yeah, no, the, the worst place to get laid is on a porn set unless you're in a scene. Other than yeah, that, you're right. yeah, forget it. If you think you're going to get anywhere, if you're a director or anybody, forget it. It just yeah, exactly. Happen. Now, yeah, no, go on. You, you had a few. Uh, we talked about how a lot of the girls that, that you worked with were really not a common household name. Like, they weren't that known. They were kind of starting out because it was all new then. But then when you did Flesh Gordon, you had somebody that was pretty well known. I want to know what her attitude was like, and that's Candy Samples. Oh, oh yeah. Well, that was Chief Nelly. Uh, Mary Ga Gavin is her real name. And, uh, yeah, and Candy was, you know, totally agreeable to, uh, to anything we asked. But, you know, and actually the plan in the, sh in, in the uh, film was for her to be sitting on a dildo. And so when she stood up, you know, you, you were supposed to see the dildo come out. But I forgot to do that. And, uh, and then she went on afterwards, and, and she did a series of uh, films uh, with a fellow in San Francisco mm -hmm. uh, called, uh, anyway, they were with John Holmes, um, what the hell is the name of, uh, anyway, they're, and she did very well with those, Candy Samples and John Holmes. But, you know, John Holmes had a dick that was so big, he couldn't really get a heart, he, he had a hard time getting a heart on, he could never really get a heart on. Uh, and because he couldn't get blood into it, yeah. But like I say, now with Viagra, they all get hard ones. <laughs> you know, if it wasn't enough, I don't want to talk. Uh, you know, a little bit more about Flesh Gordon. Of course, it's the one you're really known for. Although you've been known for a lot of things, but I mean, that's the one that that's the one they're going to chisel on your tombstone. I can guarantee you because <laughs> this is legendary. Uh, if it wasn't enough that you had to falling out with Bill Osco, uh, right in the middle of Flesh Gordon, this and that. You got raided, and they came as confiscated reels of your film. Is that right? Yeah, that's 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 true, and uh, and and then the the cops wouldn't give it. You know, wouldn't give the film back uh, and, until I agreed to cut out all the this, all the scenes that I had porn in them. Mm -hmm. And they, by that time, I had already more or less just you know consigned myself into giving the film an R rating. 
yeah. uh, or an NC, NC-17 rating, I guess, was uh, the one that was common. And uh, so I, I had t- taken out all the porn, although there's a, there's one orgy on the King, uh, King uh, Wang's throne room where you can see somebody giving a, a momentary blowjob. But, uh, but anyway, all the porn was cut out of it. And... Um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so when when flesh came out, I mean, it, you know, it, we we took it to the. Uh, in fact, I just was reading the uh, the article. Uh, Bill Bill had his Rolls Royce, which always which came in in very handy, and uh, Craig T. Nelson, who did the monster voice. We're talking about uh, the actor, the known actor, did the voice, right? Craig T. Nelson from Poltergeist. And- he, he, yeah, Craig T. Nelson. Yeah. He was uh, a coach. Yeah, and uh, Bill brought him by the uh, editing room, uh, you know, one night. And uh, I had an Arab guy named Abbas Min. He was the our, my editor. Anyway, uh, you know, Craig, we, Craig sat down and 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 we should, I just ran the uh, scene by him on the cam table, and he just started ad libbing lines. And they were so good. I just said, "Look, we gotta, you know, I want to record this right now while he's here because I don't want to lose any of the spontaneity in, in the uh, in the uh, performance." Right. So we built a little sound booth out of out of uh, 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 what do you call it? Movers mats mm-hmm. around him, and so that you know that the, the chem table wouldn't, you know, the rattling of the chem table wouldn't come through. And he recorded the thing right then, and and uh, it it worked it worked in beautifully. Uh, you know, a monster's work is never done. Yeah, well, you, you <laughs> had a lot of legendary people that wound up becoming famous in special effects, like Jim well, Camperth yeah. and, and Rick Baker and all that. Is that right? That that, that was like well, the yeah. The, well, most fam- famous was Dennis Muren, yeah, who 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 won seven Academy Awards at one point, and uh, he did. You know, he did Star Wars and. Uh, you know, and, and Greg Jean worked on, uh, you know, did a bunch of things, and 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 Danforth. Uh, you know, they all, when things got heated, and you know, they they all said, you you know, you, you know Mike Miner was the, our art director, and Mike was a a genius. He he was the one who made the film have its wonderful look, and and he, you know, he could throw a couple things together, and all of a sudden you'd have a a, a fantastic set. Uh, you know that would have cost thousands of dollars, and he did it for basically nothing. Mm. But um, when when Mike uh, when he came by the office, and you know there was a lot of tension growing up, growing between us, and uh, they 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 said, "Look, we don't want our names on the film. Uh, you know, we want our money, and don't put our names on the mm. film." And uh, so anyway, I you know I. I had all obliged, but uh, but uh, Jim Danforth had done such, such you know beautiful work. You know, uh, you know when I took when I took the film to be developed at Cinema Research, uh, the, the guy told me you know this this is as good as anything Harry Harryhausen has ever done. Yeah, absolutely. It, it was groundbreaking for the time, and knowing the budget you'd worked with and everything, it, it was incredible. Yeah, it was incredible. So, so I, I, I didn't want to like screw Jim out of his credit, so I, I printed it backwards. <laughs> Mitch Crop that. Wow, <laughs> there you go. You know, you raised a, a very interesting point here. You talked about why Flesh Gordon wasn't released with the heavy porn scenes. It was because the footage was confiscated. There was a DVD release of Flesh Gordon that supposedly had all of that put back in. Was that not true? Because a lot of people that reviewed it said it wasn't much different than the uh, cut we saw that had uh, none of the hardcore scenes. Well, if, they, if it did have all the footage cut, you know, back in, I don't. Possibly they got it out of the police vaults because the police, you know, had taken the footage and, uh, you know, and on top of it. You know, when when I had finally finished the film and had taken it to the negative cutter, uh, you know, they called me up and said, "Look, there's there's some footage missing. We can't we can't uh, do this negative cut for you." And uh, and you know, when I went and looked at, you know, I said, "Yeah, lo and behold, I can see that the cops had purposely taken 
some of the, some of the footage, including excuse me, okay. inclu- it, well, in, you know, including the scene with my, with uh, with Dale coming down the aisle in the airplane, and uh, they had taken a whole roll and just thrown thrown it away. Uh-huh. I don't know what the hell happened to it, but it was gone. But you know, and I was super de- depressed at the time. Oh and, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I, I come into the office, and my uh, assistant Walter, Walter Sitchie, who was very, very in- instrumental in you know putting all our films together, uh, uh, Walter was at the uh, at the uh, editing table, uh, running out outtakes through the uh, machine, through the movieola, and uh, he, you know, and he had found basically enough cuts. That we could replace all the lost lost footage, or still, you know, that the cops had taken, we could we could replace you know ninety percent of it, and so so I I was forced to build I, I build a, a couple of sets in my backyard. In your backyard, um, wow. Yeah, where we were living in in Laurel Canyon at the time, and uh, I built the you know the. Uh, the little airplane uh, that you know Flesher's first uh, bound in, and, and uh, my wife played. You know, you know Dale. Uh, Dale had disappeared and didn't want to be associated with the film anymore. And so my wife, but but my wife, you know, I, I shot my wife from you know from from the waist down so as she comes through the uh, aisle, and and uh, you know, and I had you know. Like I had the uh, the uh, the uh, Egyptian e- editor was playing the one of the people in the s- seats, and when she uh, hit his elbow, he you know he says in in Egyptian, "Fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> so that's I didn't I didn't know that that the actress that played Dale in the film just got fed up and just split, and, and yeah. wasn't, wasn't able to finish, and your wife filled in. Yeah. Wow. He, yeah, and then uh, you know, and then my brother-in-law, uh, I had, you know, I, I, I had, you know, some. There was some. Um, fortunately, there were some. Some of the sets were saved out in Eagle Rock, and uh, and the jewel chick who gets, uh, sh- you know, they shake the jewel out of her, you know, the, mm-hmm. and, and uh, you know, she was gone, but I, I was able to shoot that with, you know, I, I learned a lot about photography by that time and I I, I was able to use, I, I, I don't know if you know what a split field diopter is but uh, I could put flesh in the background against a couple of the green panels of the throne room and put the put her face right up against the, the uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, bottom half of the film and then flesh comes running towards her so you know, I used a lot of trickery to get the shot done. Is it's it's a miracle yeah. you got it done at all. But it was interesting to hear about why the porn stick DVD, right? You're just assuming they might have got footage from the police. Yes, in France, and Brazil, and all you know, uh, Japan and whatever. And uh, I've always been very casual about money, yeah. uh, so I know I, I didn't connect, collect anywhere near what I was supposed to, right. you know, collect. Yeah, I'm sure you but, got screwed. Uh, Literally, and, and not just. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. I, I got a beautiful. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it was like promotion stuff because of what happened to you. But when when Bill Osco did Alice in Wonderland, and we had Christina Bell in studio, and we talked to her about that, that was the same kind of situation to where it was released softer, and they supposedly put porn scenes back in, and it it was funny because I didn't believe her at all that the the porn scenes that were put in, she denied that they were her. Maybe they weren't her. I don't know. But, you know, I wondered about that because a lot of times when they shoot a film, they'll shoot a hard version and a soft version at the same time. But that that's interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, it, it, it's possible. I, I don't, you know, I, you know, Bill turned out to be a major, you know, he wound up doing three years in prison and uh, for tax evasion because, you know, when I, when I was in the midst of breaking up with him, the IRS had was looking, they found 50,000 bucks in his bank account that was unexplained, yeah. right. and he wound up doing three years in the joint. Uh, but you know, I you know I got to give him credit. He put Alice in Wonderland together. Yeah, and, I love and, it. It's know, a good film. 
And, yeah. And Christine's a, a nice lady. It's just, I, I'm not so sure she was telling me the truth about saying she didn't do the hardcore stuff. She said that wasn't her. I don't know. Look like her to me. But, <laughs> yeah. But whatever. Well, it could be. Well, I guess yeah. you guys had some problems with, and this is crazy, because the, the Flash Gordon serials are public domain, but Universal threatened you guys? Well, when when I looked at the at the uh, you know I, I had I had just told Ben Denisti you know to write a script you know for Flesh Gordon. Actually, the idea was presented to us by Bill Hunt, who who wound up playing Emperor Wang. Right. And and so Ben Denisti you know did a script you know but you know I'm looking at at what at what we're putting together one day one day and I realized that it's very similar to Flash Gordon's, you know, trip to Mars. And I said, oh, shit, you know, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to get in major trouble. So that was the reason I put that, you know, that uh, somewhat tedious uh, explanation. And, you know, without them, you know, they were heroes of yesteryear, et cetera, et cetera. Right, right. So I have I have a couple of questions that are coming in from the audience. So I'll go ahead and field those to you as well, Howard. Everybody's loving us, by the way. Um, Everybody's just so glad you're here. Oh, oh cool. Someone, <laughs> someone had asked, uh, in, in addition, obviously, to the, the problems that you had with the confiscation of the, of the films for Flesh Gordon, um, what was the processing or uh, the condition of the, of the film elements? They asked because they said that when they were, and you have to understand, Howard, our listeners are hardcore movie fans. They analyze every piece of cinema they can get their hands on. They said that when they watched some of the footage of Flesh, that it had appeared that some of the actors had uh, kind of a pink colored skin. Was that intentional or was, did that have something to do with something that happened with the film element? Yeah, that's probably just, uh, you know, the, the uh, whatever lab was processing the film. Sometimes when a film goes through, pr you know, printing, it gets a little pink uh, mm -hmm. tint to it. Right, right. And then uh, the next question uh, that we had from the audience was they're wanting to know how involved were you in the making of Flesh Gordon 2? Which is actually was going to be my next question because you did Flesh Gordon 2 16 years after Flesh Gordon 1. And so. it was the last thing you ever did, which was sad for everybody. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that's you know, the fellow from Austria that's doing Flesh, uh, Finding Planet Porno. Mm -hmm. uh, that was his favorite uh, Flesh Gordon picture. He actually thought it was funnier than the original Flesh Gordon, and and then a, a group years later, you know, a, a group called Kung Fu Boogaloo. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with them? No, but it sounds they, like something I want to see. <laughs> yeah, well, they they did a, a review of uh, Flesh. They 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 reviewed both Flesh Gordon and Flesh Gordon meets the Cosmic Cheerleaders, mm -hmm. and and uh, they 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 started out by saying originally they weren't going going to review either film. But then after he did the review, he was so thrilled with, uh, you know, especially the the, uh, the cosmic cheerleaders. He said, you know, the turd people and uh, what have you. <laughs> he said, who would who would ever put their their child in the in in the turd film scene? <laughs> <laughs> now you uh, you were you were credited as co-directing Flesh Gordon, but Flesh Gordon Two was all you, right? Yeah, that, I made that. Yeah, I was. That was all by me, and and Marie Smith put the money together. Marie Smith is a Canadian, and uh, and again we ran out of money, and uh, I wound up putting my own money in at the end, which was in, you know. But then, you know, then when the film came out, uh, you know, we had problems getting theaters to, to play it. You know, when when Fresh Gordon One came out. Peter Locke took it to to the, the head of the Regal Theaters in New York, mm -hmm. and his first comment was, uh, "Who would want to see that?" <laughs> and um, so then, but then Peter didn't give up, and we did we did a stunt in front of the uh, the uh, hotel there in the, in the Plaza Hotel, and uh, you know, and and the new, and the and we got a lot of press. You what, know, what did you do? Well, we had we I I had uh, the the Flesh Gordon costume 
flown out from uh, L.A. Uh, and we rented a crane, and we tied uh, we tied uh, uh, Gene Longdick. What's his name? Uh, lo- uh, anyway, he was an actor uh-huh. known for his long dick. Mm-hmm. So I put him in the Flesh Gordon outfit, and we sung him in in from the uh, into the uh, scene. And and then we had somebody in an ape suit on top of the fountain, <laughs> the fuel surf, and he came crashing down through the water oh. and uh, attacking uh, my wife, who was playing, in, and and Liz Torres, who was uh, Peter Locke's uh, girlfriend, mm-hmm. and he started attacking them in the car- the carriage, and then Flesh uh, uh, lands on the ground and picks up a cream pie and smashes it into the ape's face and wow. <laughs> la la la. Damn it, they don't do they don't do that stuff anymore. I mean, what the hell? That's what, everybody had all the fun back then. So why yeah. is Flesh Gordon to the end for you? I mean, you've done other things. We're going to talk about. Uh, you did a a book of golf cartoons with a forward by Bob Hope of all people. Yeah. Uh, you you did a series of tapes and vocabulary, but why did the filmmaking stop? Well, after I did, uh, you know, well, I made a, I made a, a about, uh, you know, I think eight or nine f- films, all which, you know, got awards. Uh, you know, the last, last was, uh, 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 well, Honey Pie, and, you know, it, it, you know, I don't know if you ever saw any of them, but th- they were basically what I call vignette. I, I would put together four Interest, you know, I had one that was shot in black and white, and I had uh, uh, this, this guy with a, b- a big, massive dick playing uh, the villain. And uh, you know, when when the two uh, the actors and actor you know, mm-hmm. when they see you know his big dick, uh, they they go running up the stairs. And I shot it in black and white and you know slow motion footage, so you know they they got that look of uh <laughs> you, you know that old time look right and so i i did it i did you know seven or eight films like that and they all won awards and um so you know so i had you know but then i you know i after you know after viagra came out and the whole scene changed and this and that and, and you know and i had seen enough pussy i i was <laughs> I mean, I, I you never see enough <laughs> pussy, but I mean, I, 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 when I was little, I, I would, I would lay on the, you know, my father split from my mother when before, before I ever met him, and I was living at my my grandma's house, and I would lay on the uh, on the floor, either over in the uh, in the where the door, you know, where she had to step over me, I would lay on the floor on my back so that when she stepped over me I could look up and you know see what she, you know because I, I, I had no idea what girls looked like yeah right, I know. Right. and uh, you know and uh, so anyway after making all these porno movies I but basically you know know what they look like but I still have to look at porn movies every you know well, you, you I'm have still to have, addicted you have to have porn films because after a long time of not getting a date you forget what it looks like <laughs> Well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, are, yeah, you, yeah. are you surprised in knowing all the repression that was going on? And I don't know what you think about him. Uh, I, I directed Ron Jeremy in something, and it was a doc- oh yeah, I, I know I know Ron. Okay, I you know to me, he was around my daughter. He was around everybody on set. We did a documentary on on the old Forty Second Street stuff with with Seika and this and that, and Ron was not the monster they tried to say he was and yet they put that man away we'll never see him on the street again are you surprised they're still persecuting porn people after all these years and do you think the well, reason yeah i was yeah go ahead i, I was actually wondering why, why i almost looked it up the other day in the internet to see what you know because i know he got busted mm-hmm. so, sort of you know uh he had the same problem that um uh, that uh, uh uh, Harvey Weinstein had, yeah, uh, you know, and Harvey Weinstein, you, you know, he just basically would stand in the hall in a narrow hall and force the girl to rub next to him, rub up against him as she went by, 
and, uh, you know, and most, you know, girls didn't say anything, but, you know, how, you know, he was the well-known producer, and they wanted to, you know, the role in the in the movies and whatever, but then a couple of girls started complaining, and he got busted, and yeah. and wound up doing uh, you know twenty years in prison. Right. right. Well, what do you think? Because I, I know that we talked a little bit about this uh, when we talked on the phone previously, Howard, um, and I wanted to get your comments on it on the air. What do you think about our? environment as far as films and television today and how far they go and whether they're censored you is there a ship anymore uh, okay and and you has naked it gets transferred back you know back from modern day times back to old time ireland uh, old time scotland mm. and uh but yeah yeah it, it's shocking uh, you know the, the, the you know the the, the uh censorship is no longer uh, an issue and you know and for that matter you know this, this other book I'm working on uh, you know about, you know about you know what men's uh, attitude mm -hmm. about women um, it, it what was I gonna say I lost my train of thought that's uh, okay that's okay uh, but anyway anyway yeah I you know they you know they they uh, men couldn't you know couldn't stand you know the oh you know there I don't know if you've heard of a, a something called the American Plan. No. No. Well, the American Plan was started at the end of World War Two, I guess it was one or two, and it was it was basically started in Sacramento. And 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 you know and it gave the police the right to arrest any girl that they considered to be of ill repute, hmm. and they started running, winding up all kinds of women. Uh, I just read that you know today I was looking you know doing a little research on it, and you know I, out of the forty nine men who were who were, were arrested, over a thousand fifteen women were arrested, hmm. and you know any woman who was you know, out alone, or you know, they 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 considered them to be prostitutes. Right. And even though, you know, they weren't prostitutes, they they would be, you know, wound up and taken in, taken into jail. Yeah, labeled. And then, yeah, labeled, and then and then injected with mercury, and I forget what the other drug was. Mm. Uh, and and a lot of them, you know, went sterile because of that. Uh, and these these were just innocent, innocent girls. And then, of course, the the flappers came out, and you know the you know as times went on, and it, it, Hollywood started loosening up a little. But this was all kind of what preceded porno, and it, you know, and it it uh, it just kind of you know it was called the American Plan, and it went on until nineteen. It finally got. Ended in 1970, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's it's interesting because even though uh, society has gone so far as far as there's not really censorship as far as you know what kind of nudity you can put they on still television. They persecute people like there, Ron Jeremy. Yeah, though. there is, and there is still a, a, a stigma. Even though we've gone through the sexual revolution and all that kind of stuff, I mean, there still is that double standard that if a, a you know a guy is sexually ambiguous. He's he's a stud, and if a woman is, she's a, a whore, or she's crazy, or she's a slut. Well, yeah, that that's right. Women women are, you know, men are considered studs, but but women who like sex are all whores. Right. And you know, and that you mentioned Ron Jeremy again. You know, I my last, you know, I had Ron Jeremy was going to rent our house uh, to do it. You know, only Ron could think of. You know this settings of this I don't know if you know what my house looks like but anyways he was going to do a prison film here oh. and uh, and but then it came out on on the news that the police were able to um, were able to if you if you were shooting a porn movie they, they could confiscate your equipment and uh, yeah. you know it, they could really go over the top on you and uh, that was the last I heard of Ron Jeremy until I saw he got busted in Las Vegas. And I, like you say, I don't, uh, 
I, you know, I'm sure Ron, you know, got, you know, you know, didn't do much more than what I used to do. But I don't, I, but, you know, I can't say he, he didn't force himself a little bit on some women, but I don't think they're all telling the truth because you get one and all of a sudden there's 40. And all, yeah. when, when he was on my set, all he cared about was pizza. And e- and sleeping. And sleeping. He slept on the set a lot. Man was tired, okay? The man was... <laughs> he, oh, oh, pizza and... The <laughs> taking a nap. Taking a nap. That's all he cared about. Uh, another, oh, really? Yeah. yeah, that sounds like Rob. <laughs> another question from our, our listeners. Uh, did you know and it, did you have any kind of a friendship uh, with... Uh, the? Playboy magazine is what was mentioned. Actually, well, Playboy magazine. Uh, I read about Flesh Gordon in Playboy magazine. Yeah, because they were saying that uh, quite a few years ago, uh, Playboy had an annual article called "The Sex Year in Review." If Flesh Gordon made that particular issue after it was released, that was great promotion. Yeah. Uh, so, what kind of, of of did you have any kind of a relationship back and forth with the magazine? Well, yeah. Well, Suze Randall, who uh, is you know still a very good friend of mine, and. And our daughter, our daughter Holly Randall, who, who took over the photography end of Suze's business, uh, yeah, she got her start by shooting for uh, Playboy magazine. Mm. And uh, and one of her her actresses was was uh, the one Bill used in Alice in Wonderland. Right. I want to ask you too because we we talked about you put out some other stuff. Now you put a a book out of golf cartoons. And uh, forward by Bob Hope, were, were you guys friends? And did Bob have any reservations about doing a forward on your book, even though it wasn't about sex because of your background? Well, who knows? I never heard from Bob Hope. Uh, but, you know, there'd be no reason for him to have a, any uh, issue about it. No, absolutely it was just, not. It just cartoon, uh, comic strips that I had collected over the years that, had, you know, had something to do about golf. And yeah. I used to be, you know, a, a crazy golf a- addict until I, uh, you know, until I fell down and broke my ankle, and mm. uh, you know, and I've been in the wheelchair ever since. Yeah. Now, I I wanted to ask and and kind of tie this in with you with your new book, uh, but for your book that you put out in 2015, take your shame and shove it. What was the re- reception to that book? Uh, is it still available if listeners want to get, like, if they want to get an autographed copy from you, are they able to do that? And then also, when might we see this new book that you're working on now? Well, that'll be a while. But, uh, yeah, Take Your Shame and Shove It is available on Amazon. Uh, and uh, But if you guys like, I've got a, uh, some copies here. I can, I'll be more than happy to send you one. Absolutely. Oh, I would just love to have your autograph. You're a legend to me. Uh, I heard some rumor that you're trying to get a, a documentary done on uh, that book. Okay, uh, you know. Well, about. that's what, yeah. Well, that 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 was uh, 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 I'm losing my head here. Uh, Christian Genzel, he's the Austrian. Oh, okay. and they yeah. came they came over here and he stayed here at the house for uh, you know a month and traveled around and. They met, uh, you know, they went up and met Maurice, and they met uh, uh, the the girl who played uh, Harlot and Serena and, and all those people. And, uh, but uh, Christian Genzel is his name. Uh, anyway, yeah, that uh, that's, um, the doc, you know, he just called me the other day and said it's almost, they shot, you know, tons and tons and tons of footage. And he, he was in the middle of, uh, you know, just finishing up the editing, but he's, said it looks very good so i i'm sure it does i mean i, I know he, i know he does a nice nice job i don't remember if you said of course your, your wife had filled in for some of the dale arden shots but is, is there any other cast members of flesh gordon is still around that, that included in that documentary or um well i know joe hutchins died in a in a some kind of tragic accident i forget what it was um so and then we got uh, you know Tony Tra- Tony Travis uh, yeah Bill Hunt died and Nora Biedernick, uh who you know when Nora Biedernick, who I met at Reb Sunset International and mm-hmm. when I first met her and uh, you know she was a German girl and and. 
she was so excited about getting laid. She said, oh, I like that one. Oh, but I like that one, too. Oh, but I like that one. <laughs> but uh, like a lot of girls, I mean, I think she bloomed up to, to 250 pounds yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So she didn't want to do the interview. But I don't know, maybe, maybe he'll convince her to, you know, reconsider. Boy, I, I tell you, I have enjoyed this so much. And the times went by please come on again i really enjoyed this This is so enjoyable for me and and you you were very interesting and it just was intriguing okay well thank you very much and you know i've been thinking about it all week (laughs) (laughs) yeah you you're old school promotion i like that you posted about the show and everything that's great thank you okay well look at thank you guys and appreciate it very much absolutely. absolutely thank you so much howard and have a great rest of your weekend i will be in touch afterwards and uh let's stay in touch we'd love to have you come back on in the future and we'd love to stay updated on this documentary okay tiffany All thank right. you thanks howard bye-bye bye-bye, bye-bye.